evening, everybody, and thanks very much, for uh, Teresa, for uh, the invite and for uh, the opportunity to, to talk here tonight. Um, my name is Dominic Byrne. Uh, I work in the, the IT department in Fingal County Council, uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, projects that I've been involved in in, in open data, uh, and I'm going to quickly go through the first bit. So Fingal, essentially North County Dublin, is the third largest local authority by population in the country, 270,000 people, youngest profile and fastest growing. And it was this rapid population growth. We used a lot of data uh, to, to, to cater for service planning, to cater for the amount of growth that we had in our area. And that led us to a place where we uh, came across the concept of open data. And open data is about the public sector releasing its data for others to reuse. And there's a number of reasons for doing this. One is transparency, being able to see what is behind the decisions that governments make. Uh, there's participation, encouraging citizens to participate in the decision-making process, uh, collaboration, so collaboration between public private sector, between different public sector bodies, and also commercial opportunities because this data actually has value and others can build services on top of the data that's released. So two and a half years ago, we decided to, to release our data, and we were the first uh, public authority in Ireland to, to release it as an open data initiative. There is data available. I suppose the important thing, uh, elements to releasing the data is, first of all, that you release it under a license that, that people can reuse and have permission to do other things with it, and there, there aren't restrictions. And also that the data is available in open formats so that you don't require proprietary software in order to use it. Um, so we released it. There's uh, the Tisha presenting us an, with an award for what we did, and, and you know the award isn't great to get it, but actually what's beneficial from that is that it can showcase to others why this is beneficial. Uh, so, and you can see there that we've released 170 data sets at this stage in 12 different categories, and the categories are down the right-hand side, everything from arts to demographics, housing, environment, uh, transportation, zoning, land use. So data that the, the council holds. And in the Dublin region, uh, just over a year ago, a year and a half ago, the, the four Dublin authorities came together, and I work with... Uh, the, the, What's your name again? <laughs> Deirdre. <laughs> Meet her every other week. And <laughs> uh, so Deirdre Nirahli on the Dublin project, Deirdre from Dublin City. Deirdre will be talking at a later event of ours. Um, sorry, Deirdre. <laughs> So Dublin is uh, an initiative about, uh, again, based on data, but looking at data-driven innovation and can you actually solve some of the problems that face the city region uh, using data to underpin that. And either data as the basis for a baseline to see, okay, if we, if we do an intervention and then see how it changes, or data as the basis for a service in itself. So through Dublin, 250 data sets have been released by the region to date. And not just data from the four local authorities, but also data from some national agencies. You can see the 13 organisations. So to date, there is no national open data initiatives, but we've been facilitating the Dublin region this to happen. And also, we, we organise events. And there was an event here uh, in the Science Gallery not so long ago about public sector data and encouraging other public sector bodies to release the data. But you can see the type of events that we've run. And in Ireland, it has now, thankfully, since uh, a year ago, the government then adopted this as policy <coughs> that public sector bodies should release open data. So hopefully we'll see a lot more public bodies releasing their data <coughs> in the coming years. It's a three-year action plan, the plan under which this is happening. And in, as part of the budget last year, um, the, the, there, there was a commitment from Brendan Howland that Ireland would join the Open Government Partnership, and that would further strengthen the, the commitment of the government to these things. So, okay, that's all well and good. That's what's been happening today. How has this made a difference? So I'm going to go through some exam uh, examples of how this data has uh, been reused. We would launch, one of the things that happens is we, you know, in order to encourage this, we, you, we, we, we run events. And we launched our initiative back in 2010 at a hack day that was organized uh, actually in uh, Dublin City Council's venue. And there was another one that Theresa uh, organized and, uh, in cooperation with Fingal, with uh, uh, Microsoft and with Dublin City Council in 18 hour data challenge. And again, we ran a competition, uh, an apps competition, encouraging people to create something with this data. And we had 22 apps created. Uh, there's the winner of our competition, and there's all the various prize winners. And here's the sort of thing that was created. So the, the people who won our particular competition, uh, Discover Fingal, this is an app. Uh, it's, it's a web-based app, so a mobile-friendly app. Uh, and it's basically about uh, finding the heritage properties in the Fingal and the greater Dublin area, uh, information about them, how to get to them, uh, and the, the location of them and so on. And there's also a gamification element. If you visit a certain number, then you can get a free cup of tea in, in a certain place, but also there's a social media component to it. So that was the overall winner. 
uh, and, and he's commercialising that and looking to develop the platform on which he's uh, based that particular product. Uh, again, there's another one. This is one where you can see all the planning applications for all of the local authorities in Dublin. Uh, this is called MyPP. Before this was created, you had to go onto the websites of each individual local authority to see this information. So particularly if you're uh, on, on the boundary of two local authority areas, you would have had to go to both. So this guy took this data that we had released, put them all into this app, and you can get notified. And he's since gone on, and you can see the list here. He now has nearly 20 authorities that he's requested the data. And the good thing about this is, again, he's been through a program in the NDRC to commercialize this, and he believes that he can make a business of it, and he's looking to the US and the UK as his markets. Uh, but this is a service that the public wanted, and which in previous years we might have built and paid money, but we didn't have to pay anything. So the public sector didn't have to pay taxpayers money for this to be produced, and yet somebody's making a business out of it. So there's a win-win there. Here's one hit the road. This is a public transport planner. Again, another startup who has been through the NDRC based on public transport data. Uh, this guy, Jason Rowe Parkia, he would have actually uh, initially, uh, you know, the, the challenge, the 18 hour challenge that I spoke about a year and a half ago now at this stage, I think. Um, it was where people came together, came up with ideas, and then pitched them. Uh, and Jason's idea at the time wasn't one that was popular. Nobody said, okay, that shouldn't go through to the next phase. But Jason decided, no, I don't care what everybody thinks. I'm going to work away on my idea and develop it further. And he did, and he came second in the competition at the end and won second prize in the overall one. And since then, he's been plugging away and developing his app. And essentially, it's to find how to find parking and pay for parking in an urban area and he's white labeling and so on for others to use. And you know, I, I really admire Jason's tenacity in pursuing this. But again, based on data about parking and on-street parking and car parks, etc., in urban areas. Other examples, this is uh, a housewife decided, where do I find things for my kids? Wrote to local authorities, got their playground data, built this uh, iPhone app where you can find out where are the playgrounds, where are the facilities in those playgrounds. Somebody just took the, the trees information. We have 35,000 trees in Fingal that are planted, and they just mapped all of the trees along with a link to the Wikipedia entry for the particular tree. Uh, so, and you can just see them. But, but take that another step, and for example, you have the, 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 the ash disease at the moment. So then it can become important to see, okay, what can you do about the ash disease if people take this data that's been made available? Or can you do something around crowdsourcing uh, resolutions to that issue and so on? Yeah. Bring banks, simply. How do you find your nearest bring bank? What can I deposit at it, particularly if one is full or so on? This was an interesting one. It took public lighting data, and you could say, I want to go from here to here, and it'll tell you, is your route actually lit by public lighting? Is it safe to walk there? This is another one, Fingal Day Tripper. Uh, I want to, to spend a day out with my family in a particular area. I'm interested in particular subjects, and it'll say, OK, you could do this in the morning, stop for a cup of coffee here at, at lunchtime, and then do this in the evening, and here's the route you would take to, to avail of, of those particular features. So another one I like, this is urban rural, and, and this takes information about the protected structures, so those structures and those buildings in an area that have a protection order on them. But also, there are national architectural uh, database, that, and there's also an archaeology one. This guy has taken those different data sets, brought them together, and now you can look at the different records and map them and see where they are and find out about them. And if you click on a particular one, and there's a photo available from the national database, and that's actually taking data from different places, bringing it all together and enabling you to, to view them. So there are different examples of what's been done with the data today. Um, there's also a community has formed around this, and I see one or two people who have been at, at meetups. And, and actually, this Thursday, there's a meetup in, in Engine Yard in Barrow Street, just down from Google. Uh, the, the website, tito.io, Open Data Ireland. If, if you search for Open Data Ireland on Google, you'll find it. And it, you know anybody's welcome to come along. The, the, they tend to be on themes. And uh, this Thursday's theme is, on, theme is on the commercial reuse of open data. But in, in February, there was an international open data day where uh, in over 100 cities around the world, people got together just uh, for a day, look and see what could we do with data that has been made available for our, by our communities. And in Dublin, these are the 10 projects that people decided in Dublin that they were going to work on, and different ones on lots of different areas, everything from health to education. Uh, and some of you may be smiling, and it's usually at the one, how thick are your kids up at the top there? And that was actually about finding, you know, uh, s schools for children and where was the nearest schools and uh, uh, the various performance of schools. Uh. 
So, and you can see that some of that, those topics fall into the kind of the theme of looking at our, our urban areas. So for me, that, that leads to be okay, so this has been done and where's the future? So for me, the future in this space is, first of all, in crowdsourcing. So, okay, we've looked at open data that the public sector has released, but there's a lot of data we don't have. There's data that's out there that people pass every day. And to what extent can we get citizens in general to actually be providing data in to supplement what's there already? And that leads on to the whole idea of co-design. Can you actually open up the design process of urban areas of our environments and enable participation through the, the data that we provide, but also the data that citizens themselves provide? And, and, and also the whole idea of can open data and the data that, that we provide actually support local communities in building community and in, in actually intervening in community and developing community spirit and community interventions. That's it. Thank you very much.